Hi everyone, Alvar here, and welcome to this Let's Play. Well, uh, in this video I'll be doing some uh, item farming. Um, well, it's gonna probably take me multiple runs of different quests, but I will only be putting in like one run of each quest, so you don't have to like sit through multiple runs. So first of all, I'm gonna start off with this. I did this a few episodes ago. And As you walk into my the goal was to hallway, get at the first-time bonus on me for first out, first of all. They're discussing something. And now that that's done, rooms. well, yeah, Aaron's friends I can run it on to pick a leaf for farming. They tell you that Aaron is in their dorm room and ask you to check up to see how they're doing. Aaron is barely able to stay awake. They've been up all night studying for an exam, and now they're afraid of nightmares about failing. You offer to go into their dreams and ease their anxieties. Aaron's dream resembles a classroom, a completely topsy-turvy classroom. Aaron frantically scans the area for an unknown danger. You know, wait for him to stop talking. Yeah, so this quest is, uh, this the one I'm going to start with is because it actually has two items that I need from the same quest. These are not the exact best version of the items that I want, but they're in the right slot and they're close enough. And that's why I'm going for that. Uh, the other ones are going to be harder for me to get, so. I also figure once I have the items, it'll be much easier to uh, farm for the other ones uh, with the main character, so. Let Warjack do his own farming. He's going to have to run these quests on the uh, Reaper difficult anyway, so. Might as well do it when he's doing it. Yeah, also, I have a potion, a well, elixir uh, of discovery. I don't know, lesser elixir, whatever it's called. Gives me another 15% bonus to uh, getting uh, named items from chests. So I'm definitely going to be using that. Though I'll probably be taking the potion right at the end of this quest before I pop the first chest. So I get the max amount of time out of it. So yeah, basically it's, uh, you're gonna have to do this quest. I, I average out about, I don't know, six, seven minutes to do this quest. A lot of it's just waiting for uh, things to spawn in, waiting for dialogue to finish. There's a inherent problem with item farming is that it's much easier to get the items once you already have them. In other words, if you have a character that's fully geared out, running quests at max difficulty fast is very easy and efficient. But if you don't have those items, so trying to run the same quests the is much harder. For the moment. You should rest and prepare for the next onslaught. This is also compounded by the fact that if you're doing the solo, it's really much harder to, uh, well, do these quests if you don't have all the gear you need. So this time we're going for the strategy of trying to make sure I've got one character who's always at a cap, who can pretty confidently go around and farm gear for anybody else. So this way, uh, if Warjack is going to be the one working on the new builds, uh, whenever he gets to cap and he needs a full gear set, uh, first of all, I have already loads of gear stored around uh, stored up for like basically starting from level 28 and up every piece of gear I find I keep and I have dedicated bank characters for each piece of gear uh, I'll probably make a video showing how to make a how to make a bank tune the fastest way I know uh, because well I need another bank tune just for the level 32 stuff that I'm gonna start collecting now and yeah so uh, should have everything, but I'm still missing a few pieces uh, for, uh, well, missing a few pieces for Warjack's full uh, gear set. Or at least his first gear set. So here we are. I gotta say, doing this quest not on Reaper, instead just doing it on Epic Elite, is, uh, well, much more relaxing.
a huge gnome appears before you, looking down at you with disappointment. Well, well, well. Look at that, Aaron. You failed your exam. Just as I expected. Wanted to use this for a uh, thumbnail. The problem is Why don't you it's too similar to the one that I already knowledge. used for the run it's I did of this quest like a few episodes anyway. ago, so. To look for something else. Home turns into a nothing. And attacks. The funny thing that happens with these guys is when they do their eye beam attack, as soon as they finish it, they can move again. But there's like a slight uh, delay from when the beam finishes and to when the animation disappears. Like as they finish it, like they spin around, spin around quickly, yeah, and it's like stays connected to them. It's really funny. Luckily, it doesn't affect you, so at least that. It's not like they can spin around and blast you with it. I don't think I've been hit by this beam yet, so I'm not really sure what kind of damage it does. And I'm not too <laughs> I'm not too anxious to find out. It seems pretty easy to avoid, so. Yeah, just dodge it. Put two fingers up to his eye when he does it. Also, right now I'm set up kind of like in a tank mode, so my DPS is kind of uh, shabby at best. Yeah, overall it wasn't too bad. Sorry about blinding your eyes. This is not my fault. Aaron thanks you profusely for your help. He promises to get some sleep before the exam. Okay, so here I'm going to use the elixir. Yeah, I just pulled an item. I mean, it's just one of the standard weapons, but it's a very nice one. It's got a plus four mythic on it, and it's one of the main uh, weapon types, great axe. So there's a very good chance I'll actually use this sometime. And if I just swap it for two other weapons, I'm not going to be able to get one with plus four mythic. I don't know. Uh, usually, yeah, I'll just take it. Usually when I get a, anytime I get an item that I don't have yet, I will just take it. Also, it's much faster here to, I guess, just walk out into reroll than to recall. Anyway, so yeah, so that's going to be that quest. Overall, no big deal. Yeah, here's some of the stats, okay? So I got the pretty early on, I got the, the armor that I was looking for. Uh, yeah, so this is the one, one of the two pieces I need from this quest. And basically I need it for the set. Then I had, uh, well, four times where I didn't get what I wanted, but I got the, the Vitality Augment. Also got a rune arm that I don't need. And yeah, and I also got the, the helm. So I got both items I need from this quest. Overall, I had to loot this quest. Right, well, two rerolls I think I did in this quest. So yeah, that was it. And next, uh, next quest. This one I also did. I think this was last episode. A figure in a familiar hat stands next to a nondescript door. Yeah, but I did my uh, for you to join him. I did my uh, Reaper run for of it. You got my first time Lady bonus. Ilmero's assistant. Well, they speak to Lady Ilmero in private. The assistant tells you that you may join Lady Ilmero in the office. As you enter the office, you see the traveler having a conversation with a shadowy form. This must be Lady Ilmero. She glares at you as you approach. The unexpected sound of shouts comes from the room you were just in. Intruders! To your amazement, Lady Ilmero emits a burst of deadly magic. That yeah, so this quest is uh, kind of long, relatively changes. speaking. How Let's see. Come on, I know what I have someplace here. here. I should have a How ring. They make and it's got the. Uh, well. It's got invisibility on it, so. Follow this insolent new god. This is no ordinary elf woman. Got it. This is the legendary lich, Lady Vol. Take this portal. It will bring you closer to the vessel. Know that it will take belief to buy.
bypass its wards and claim it for yourself. Very annoying, but there's so many locked gates in this quest where you have to kill all the all of the enemies to get past, but whatever. Yeah, it's not a big deal. I mean, this quest was way scarier on Reaper. Yeah, but trying to avoid having to fight with absolutely every enemy. And of course, this is locked again. Okay, fine. If you insist. Is good enough or I have to kill those tools? Oh, no. Good enough. Great. The pavement beneath you cracks and then gives way. You've stumbled into the sewers. Let's see if I can get past and all these were rats. Someone else's territory. Where rats hiss curses at you for invading their sewers. Yellow alert. Yeah, we got the red alert already. Good chance I'm gonna get a purple alert any second. Just if you're wondering, the point of a red alert is so players don't run by and leave too many monsters up because it slows down the game. So basically, this is like an anti-lag method by forcing you to kill things. And there I go, purple alert. I think I'm going to have to go back and kill some stuff because I'm not going to be able to move in this quest and I'm going to be continuously bombarded by monsters on purple. So I'll just got to kill some stuff. I still think I'm going to come out saving some time, but not as much as I was hoping for. I guess you can't just ignore and skip everything. I concede. Will this guy get rid of my green alert also? Nope. Well, I guess the damage was done. I'm stuck with the green, green alert. Nope, it's gone. Okay. I'll take that. It's unfortunate you can't activate your speed boost while you're on the ladder. I mean, you can activate it before, but not when you're on the ladder. A large gate bars access to the heart of the Emerald Claw Complex. Once again, I've got my dungeon alert up already. The third crystal lights, and a large metal portcullis opens. There we are, back to our red alert. The vessel is almost within your grasp, but then it's guarded. This nonsense of speed running and farming all together. Here's something cool. I'm gonna drop my cauldron of flame right next to the barrier, so that everything who's on the other side of the barrier will also die. I mean, might as well, right? Man, what a mess. Very lucky right now I'm running this on the defensive version of the build. If I was uh, more DPS oriented, uh, I wouldn't be able to handle all this heat. I'll probably take way too much ship damage and just die. But yeah, doing fine.
get away from my uh, cauldron of flame to come off cooldown. I'll be able to put one down again. Kill those guys on the other side of the fence. There we go. I mean, they're not taking massive damage from it or something. But they are taking damage and it stacks up, so... Anyway, they're just keeping this uh, fight interesting. Uh, knowing that I was going to have to make this uh, video made out of the segments because I was going to take one take from each uh, quest. So it was recorded using the old fashion of uh, voiceover after recording without the voice and without the music. So I didn't want the music to get all cut up. So, well, so it's a little bit different than, than my usual style of the last, last plays, but hey, you get a edited version and some more things put into it, so hope you enjoy it. Now that the Guardian has been defeated, you can at last... Also, this room spawns multiple rounds of monsters, and I uh, completely forgot Rainbow about them, so I gotta clear them now. The As you can see, they don't just, like, disappear when you finish the quest, you have to kill them. I will help you in what is to come. Though in truth, the power comes from within. You. You have obtained the vessel. Yeah, not bad at all. Here we go. Yeah, here's uh, the cloak I was looking for. I think this is my second one. We'll see, I've got all the stats up. I collected all the data from all the different quests. to uh, So I could compare each one, how much time it took me, how much farming I had to do, just to get the items I wanted. So You'll see that here in a second. Okay, here we go. So yeah, the first time I did it, I got the, the light armor, which was, wasn't what I was looking for, but hey. And then I got the cloak, so. Both runs I got something. That wasn't too long each run, so that's okay. At least I didn't have to reroll, so that was fine. Okay, here we go. This is the one that I already farmed. I, I farmed this more than a week ago, and I ransacked the chest using two different characters, so. This time I'm here with a uh, extra um, this time I've got an elixir, and this time also, like, I'm speeding up the process. But... So just like before, I'm going to use the same trick. I'm going to drop the cold of flame right next to the gate, so all those fire beetles who are chasing me will stand inside of it and hopefully die and get rid of the dungeon alert. Yeah, I'm cooking them all up on the other side of the gate. Truth is, I've had a lot of experience with this particular quest because I was doing it in my past life. And I was being that purple tabaxi and I was running uh, speed runs. I did this quest on uh, casual in less than a minute. And it took a lot of attempts. This particular end fight over here, if you miss one of the enemies, it just you have to wait until the next uh, round to spawn. That can uh, take up a lot of time, so. But at least the, all the... All the, whatever, practice paid off. Yeah, also, some, for some reason, they keep on grabbing me. I don't know what's wrong. Either my saves stink or something, I don't know. Or I keep on rolling ones. I'm not sure what it is. Okay, here. So, the truth is I only needed like 5 items out of 12, but I needed 5 items and 2 of them were from the same quest, so I ended up with 4 different quests, so this is like the 3rd quest, but this quest, even though it was very short, I just had terrible luck. I kept on pulling like everything but the one item I needed. I needed the belt of the ram and I couldn't get it. I kept on getting everything else, dozens, armors, what, whatever. Everything else that drops in this quest, the boots, everything, just could not get the belt. Good. 
I get yeah, two minutes and something, two minutes and 20. So yeah, here it is. Finally got the belt. You're not going to believe how many times I had to go through it, though. So yeah. Just wait until I show you the stats for this quest. So this one really, this one really exhausted me. The Prince of Satyrs then took that needle to some place called the Treasure Grove. Yeah, so to rerun this quest every time, you have to recall all the way back out. But instead, I have a second character who I just keep on abandoning the quest and he just reshares it so I can just step back in. Because if not, I'll have to return all the way back to the Feywild to run again. So that's what I've been doing here. Yeah, so here you go. Here's my second character, second account, just standing here. He's just basically my party member. And every time I finish, so. So here we go. 12 times I had I had this chest. One of the times I pulled a plus four tome of strength. I got the boots. Yeah, and only the finally the 13th time I got the belt of the ram. Anyway, so I'm gonna hand it over to a special guest of ours who haven't been here for a long time, so please greet Warjack. Hi everyone, Warjack here. Well, I'm glad to be back. I've been on a long vacation. So yeah. Arrived at Bitterspine Palace, home of one of the Prince of Frost's vassals. You proceed with caution. Whether you're expected by the Baroness or not, Prince of Frost. I'm sorry for being quiet. I'll wait for all the dialogue to stop, though. The Prince of Frost stands before a throne overlooking the crowded hall. The Baroness beside him. However, the third throne on the day stands in the air chill. Archfey points a finger toward you. Why have you disturbed me with your presence, Upslander? If I may, my friend, says the Baroness, a connection in the Summer Court sent word of the Outlander's arrival. I have granted them an audience with me. I assure you, they will not disturb the ball. You're told that Osha loathes extravagant parties such as this one. He's likely to be avoiding the crowd somewhere. Perhaps out on the windward balcony. You hear a bell chime in the ballroom. The downside of going so fast that you keep on uh, triggering all the voice cutscenes one after each other. And basically what happens is they all stack up. The head waiter explains that Osha told him not to allow anyone into the treasure vault. However, you're able to persuade the goblin to unlock the door for you. Water elementals flood out of the treasure vault to confront the intruders. You hear a bell chime in the ballroom as you pull this lever. You notice a bizarre painting depicting the wintertide ballroom. To your surprise, you're able to step through it and into the ballroom itself. This door leads out to the windward balcony. From the dim gems on either side, you can see that it has been sealed to prevent guests from following Osha outside. The court advisor stares off into the distance. At the sound of your footsteps, he jolts, turns around, and lets out a dejected sigh. Osha scoffs at you and refuses to hand over the Aurora Garden key. Just as you open your mouth to reply, he attacks. Yeah. Anyway, so you'll be noticing I'm missing tons of my hits because of the blurry. That's because I don't have true seeing on, which is exactly the item I need from this quest. A Nocturne Ring or whatever it's called. And yeah, so Jokin was running this multiple times and had no success. So I came in here and to step in and I'll carry some of my own weight. Of course, I did my first time run on Reaper to get the, my first time bonus. But now I'm in here and uh, doing a few runs. See if I can get lucky and get it. Overall, been, I've been away for some time, and now I'm back and working on the, well, the build you see right now. Osha collapses to the floor. You grab the Aurora Garden key as he fades away. He'll wake up a little dazed on the plane of air, without any hard feelings. So yeah, this is gonna be the build that I, uh, uh, that I need to make based on the, well, the community poll. So, yeah, I'm liking it. Feel very strong and confident, so. The 
you step out into the snowy I hope I can optimize it and bring it to a place where it's uh, in its center along with a flower worth posting it's a magical chilly aura the flower crumples away into nothing in the palm of your hand and instantly regrows in the soil the newly sprouted flower glows blindingly for a moment and unexpectedly a shockwave rocks the palace to your surprise the ballroom is now covered in twisting vines and familiar flowers. I thought I eradicated those flowers a millennia ago. Now they're everywhere! Snarls the Prince of Frost. Outlander, we'll fix this! Man, these text di <laughs> these dialogues don't finish. Lady Lazuli informs you that there were only two Eladra nobles she didn't recognize in attendance tonight. She knows who can tell you more. Sir Snowdrift, the resident social butterfly of the Prince of Frost's court. Sir Snowdrift tells you that Lord Beryl was last seen slinking off to the kitchen in search of a fresh bottle of wine. Then he shoes you out of this crowd of adorable. Yeah, basically, uh, this quest is kind of uh, a lot of talking and not so much fighting, especially if you know where where you need to go. says that Dame Allegra has gone to explore the Prince of Frost's quarters. Speaking Some of these fights are kind of notorious for killing players. Like the one I went down just a minute ago, going down the stairs. For some reason, you get bombarded over there and you can get wiped out really fast. I don't know, it's kind of a weird quest. One of those quests that's kind of polarizing. Some players love it, some players hate it. I don't know. I don't care. What I do care is uh, the terrible luck that the chests have been dropping. So, let's see if we can rectify that. This optional chest also drops name loot. The mysterious newcomer you're looking for. Dame Allegra saw a hooded stranger plant the frosted cerise in the garden. She bids you to follow her there, so she can help you search for clues about the culprit. A frost giant snores on the floor of his chamber. Clearly, he didn't think anyone would dare to intrude in the Prince of Frost's private quarters. You find yourself in a surprisingly sparse chamber. But even in such a bare room, most of the optional chests in Feywild don't drop a named loot, so this is kind of an outlier where you've got a optional chest and a quest, but it actually drops a loot, so it's worth doing if you're farming loot. As you drop the gem, the frost giant bursts into the room, along with a squad of red cap guards. Collapses onto the floor with a heavy thud. Yeah. I don't need any of these things. I mean, what am I going to do with that? Heavy armor? Oh well. Well, we still have got the main chest. Also, if you noticed, I'm in a party. I've got divining here over here. Uh, he's gonna help me with uh, potentially pulling the end chest. So uh, to move the story along, you have to all the party members who are in the quest be in the center over here to pull this uh, particular cutscene, and that's Dame why he's uh, waiting outside. In the center of the garden, she lets out a low chuckle. Oh, how did you like my little prank? <laughs> It was good fun, riling up that gloomy prince. There I go again. You got no true seeing, and I'm missing. <laughs> Allegra transforms before your eyes. Blurry, 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 blurry. blurry. Once she goes and puts on her displacement, it's like miss, 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 miss. Happy to see me, dearie. Good. It'll be for the last time. Oh, got it. <laughs> 
Satan with pants. I think that's enough taunting for one day. I let my pretty petals finish you off. With a mad cackle, she vanishes. <laughs> In her place, a shambling mound rises to attack. Maybe I should go and focus on some of those uh, minor trash mobs. Kind of getting on my nerve. Yeah, well, the fight's not too bad. Here I'm intentionally not walking past the door because it'll spawn a massive fight. This time, who I don't want. So forget that. Instead of just climb back up and go through the center. Return to the Baroness to tell her what happened. Yeah, now uh, I'll call the Vining to come in and help me with the pulling the chest. Oh, nope. He didn't get it. Reroll. Nope. Reroll. Nope. Ah. And then another one of these. So many of these. And yeah, I'm going to take all the extra loot, crunch some of this crystal into a, the sentient uh, weapons and make sentient XP. Anyway, that's it. I've done my part. I'm going to head them back to uh, Jokin. Well, here's the final count. First of all, I had uh, like 12 chests and you can see, you got extra armors, boots, a whole bunch of boots. Here's with the here's with the second account. Also, loads of boots. Still, no ring. I mean, got some minor artifacts. Extra more necklaces, some ferro crystal. Ah, uh, whatever. You thought it was gonna end over there? Here we're up to number twenty-eight already. Again, more heavy armors. Man, this is so many rerolls. It's unbelievable. Barrel crystal shuriken, more necklaces, and yeah, after all of this, finally the second account. So, thank you. I got my ring, nocturne ring. So that was that. Yeah, all over and all, uh, overall, ended up re-rolling 35 times for a total of 525 shards. This entire run was about two and a half hours. Two hours and 45 minutes, actually. By the way, this is how you reset with two players in this character. First one character steps out and abandons the quest, and then the character who's still inside will share it again. Now, once you're outside, you re-accept it. Now, yeah, so now you're reflagged to enter. Now, the second character can leave again. He only leaves once you've abandoned and re-accepted the quest. And then, yeah, the second character can now do the same thing. It can first abandon the quest because it needs to go first pick up the reward unless it abandons the quest then it makes out on the re reward then you can reshare it you usually can red door but this particular quest has a text dialogue you need to click on the door so you can't just re-enter by uh, using red door methods you have to use you have to abandon well one character still in get it reshared and that's it can move on anyway so that's it yeah so here you can see the items that uh, were farmed out during this run uh, yeah Overall, again, these are not the greatest items for the set, but this is going to give me uh, 
give me some peace and time while he gets to test it out and uh, hopefully uh, it's good enough uh, I guess uh, Wardrak can take it from there yeah so as I mentioned before there was a uh, many 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 rerolls so and yeah 525 shards it cost me which is well, a lot so maybe if you want to hit the join and support the channel or maybe hit the thanks button I definitely take all the money I make from YouTube and put it back into the DDO, so... Uh, by doing something like that, you'll be supporting the channel and... Well... Hopefully make uh, me... Enable me to make better content in the future. Anyway, so yeah, that's gonna be it. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye!